We've also got to consider that there are plenty of things that science can do that the average person can't really do. And yes, sure, we may be able to read some peer-reviewed papers on certain things, but not everything. And what I mean by that is things like if we want to know for definite if someone loves us. Sure, there's a few psychology tricks that you could play on someone, or you could measure their hormone levels and look at brain scans and see how they react to pictures of you or being in your presence and the like. But those methods aren't really completely reliable, especially if you don't have a baseline of the person both being in and out of love as well. Similarly, if you're at a bus stop and want to know when the next bus is due, sure, if you've got a scientific device like a phone with an internet connection, you can connect to whatever service is available and find out when the next bus is due. But this relies on you having a phone with service, battery, uh, the bus having a GPS signal, the service working and everything. If you don't have any of those things, the best you might have is the testimony of other people waiting at the bus stop. Now that is only two examples of things that on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, you either can't personally use science for, or there might be a problem with using the available science. And you can think about this in so many different areas of your life. Sometimes you actually just have to use a theory of testimony um, and trust someone else. I mean, think about going to your doctor, right? They, You have good justification to trust their opinion, uh, especially if it matches the consensus of other doctors as well. So, you know, we are, we're not the ones that have necessarily gone to medical school and studied everything about a particular con condition and medication or anything like that. We don't always use science ourselves and sometimes there isn't science available to use for a particular thing.